Everybody, welcome back, and thank you so much for being here. I'm Yumble, and I'm super excited about this one. This is a, this is a very important video to me. Um, lately, I've been talking a lot about interchanges and intersections and how roads work. And in my travels, I came up with an idea. I said, what if, what if I invented a new interchange? What if we combined a single point urban interchange? This is called a single point urban interchange. We, we did a, a tutorial about this one, a previous video, with a partial cloverleaf, which we did in a previous video. Showed you how to build each of these. These are all in the workshop as well. These are my three. This is my whole lineup. But then we got the new guy over here. It's a little bit bigger. And you'll notice it has the curves of the partial cloverleaf. And it has the single point operation of a, of a single point urban interchange, which is really nice. I call it a sim single point parklow is what I'm, I'm going to go with that until further notice. You can find this in the workshop. Um, it's the, the Steam workshop under Yumble TV. Uh, I've only got three interchanges in there. So this is the third one. And I said, what if we take the, the, best, the best of both worlds, right? Um, where your, your exit ramp does the same thing that a parklow does. But what if instead of, instead of going around and connecting to the road at a 90 degree angle and creating one, two intersections, it's a great interchange with great curves and it, it's really good at moving cars, but there's a bit of conflict in the two interchanges and in the two intersections and it takes a few phases to move people through. I said, what if we take the mentality of our partial, of our uh, single point urban interchange, which essentially makes all of the left-hand turns happen in the middle. What if we take that mentality and we go, oh, it's a single point urban interchange. Cool. And you go all the way around, but then you make a left in the middle. You know, I, I thought that was a, a good way to, um, to combine the two of these into something better than either of them. It has a larger footprint than both of them, but I promise you this runs more traffic. I don't know how much more traffic, but this absolutely runs more traffic because the ends of it are free, free flowing, just like a single point urban interchange. This is a no conflict, free flowing end. Same as this here. This center, it only takes two cycles to move all the traffic through. Moves a ton of traffic. I want to show you guys how to build this in a sunken highway configuration right now. So this is the overpass that we're about to convert into our single point park low. Uh, what I really want to do is sink the highway down. So I think we'll start by doing that. I'm a big fan of taking, um, of making like a guide road for heights. So I'm going to end up using Move It. There will be some mods involved uh, for those concerned. But you could do this without mods. It just might not come out quite as pretty. But I found increments of 12 to be really beneficial. You've probably noticed that if you've seen previous videos on the channel. Um, but going down by 12 units is kind of nice. Or 12, is it 12 meters? Yeah, it's probably 12 meters. So we're going to sink the highway by 12 meters for that sunken highway look. And right now, I'm just picking the nodes we have. I haven't done anything to this highway yet. This is not measured out or anything. I'm just going to take this and sink it to negative 12. So there we go. We've got a sunken highway. The ends are a bit sudden, but we'll adjust that later. And I'm going to take the arterial that we're connecting with, and we're just going to flatten it out. So I know there's three nodes in the middle here. We're just going to take them down to terrain height, which is, which is flat. Um, a lot of adjustments will be made to this, but for now, this is just the raw beginning of, of something good. Um, so let's figure out our, our ramp. Here's usually where I like to begin, where I want to take a, um, a node on the highway, and we're going to measure along this node. I'm just going to use our, this is how I generally do it, two lane, one way road, which kind of mimics a highway ramp. And I'm just going to go under here for some amount. Let's, let's pick, um, we're just going to go to here for now just to start our measurement. Uh, now that we know the width of this, actually what I'd like to do is measure what's going to happen here. How is, how is this going to connect? How, is, how are we going to connect to the middle? So let's figure that out. I'm going to delete, delete two sections of highway just so there aren't any confusing, uh, confusing road guidelines. And I'm going to start from this section here. I've got, I've got three evenly measured pieces from the ramp that was there moments ago. And we're just going to go three units away at ground level. Elevated. We were, we're going to want this to be elevated since the highway is sunken. But yeah, I'd really like this to be three units apart, I think. We'll see if this works. If it doesn't work out, then we'll figure it out. But that should be good. Three units away from the road. 
And the I just know that this right lane is going to exit here, and it's going to loop around, and it's going to come up here. So we're gonna we're gonna do a uh, road opposite that as well. So three units, twenty four meters. Connect that as well. So now we've got our the middle of our for context. We've got the middle of our single point partial clover leaf. God, my branding is so off with the name. <laughs> Could be better. Uh, so now what I want to do is I'm gonna go under both of these. We're gonna go straight under the road here, flat on the ground at negative 12 units. And I actually want to stop, if possible, I'd like to stop right where, right where this is. Let's see if we can pull this off. I might put the highway back in for now, just for visual reference. I've never built this sunken. This is very much, uh, you know, off the cuff, as things should be done, I think, for interchanges. You can learn with me. All right, so I want to stop this at the same spot that that pillar is. So those should be right next to each other. I think they are. I think they're perfectly 90 degrees from each other. Shout out to Precision Engineering. Very helpful. Cool. So now we've got our, our beginning point for our loop, and I want to mimic that over here. Now that we've got, we've got our highway sunken down, we've got this little guy to put in, I want to stop at the same exact spot on this side. The whole thing should be symmetrical. Um, assuming your highway is straight. If the highway is curved, all bets are off. So I know that on my partial clover leaf, we did a seven by seven curve, and I really love seven by seven by seven by seven. So it makes a really nice angle for cars to go around. So I decided to complement that and use a seven by seven on this as well. And I think it looks nice and I think it functions well. So we're going to start kind of corkscrewing up. We have to go forward seven units. This is a new interchange for me. And this is definitely, it's a new way of doing a new interchange. So there we go. We have to go seven units up because the circle is going to come all the way around. It's not a partial clover leaf. It needs a little more breathing room. This is the reason that segment there is actually the reason why this is so much bigger than uh, the partial clover leaf. But it's also going to run a lot more traffic through it, I believe. So I did negative six meters for that one. So we're going to try to go to ground level for this one, actually. Same angle, seven by seven, up to ground level. Nice. And now that we're at ground level, we can probably curve it nicely, neatly, towards this. How close do you think we are to this? If we've done this correctly, this should connect straight, like right onto it. It'll have to be elevated, of course, but... It should connect quite directly to it. Nice, that's really good. Uh, there's some refining to be done, probably in the in the way that this curves and, and probably in the way this connects, where the bridge portion begins, things like that. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So I'm going to replicate that over here. Now, assuming I've done this right, 24 meters, this one should also be 24 meters. Yes, beautiful. And that should be maintained the whole way to the end. Lovely. Cool. So those are our loops to get us up here. Uh, we still have to connect this to the other part of the road, and we also have to get an off-ramp over here. So let's see what we can do with that. This part requires a bit of move it and a bit of finesse, but I recommend going to the node that we made here. You know, you can see that there's a node there, and we're going to send this the opposite direction from the other curve. So we're going to do another 7x7, seven seven, and these roads will all be upgraded to highway eventually, so don't worry about it. It looks a little weird right now. It's going to look good by the end. I swear it. Cool. Another 7x7 seven seven there. That's pretty good. Now let's see. Can we get directly across from this? If it's three units to get to the road, three units away from that should be here. Beautiful. So to get this angle, I have a, I have a trick for getting this one. If we go all the way back to this road... I want to make a 7x7 seven seven curve, starting up here, uh, starting 7 units <laughs> here. I don't know how to explain it, but you'll see right now. We're going we're gonna to reconnect all of these. So I want to go 7 units back here. 58. That is, that is a very close to 7 units, so I'm happy with that. 7, 7. Cool. So we've made this box. All that really did was got a uh, put, it, put nodes in certain places. So I just want to curve this. Starting here, and we can actually use the um, freeform road tool for this. It should come out good. 
Nice. So that was just scaffolding to get an angle, which we did. Got a good little angle there. Uh, these are facing the wrong way, I suppose. That's cool. And we're going to mimic that on the other side. Um, I'm going to have to move some stuff to make this work. But that's the core of the whole thing. That's the, the beginnings of it. Uh, now all that's really left is to connect it on both ends. Oh, and of course this curve here. Forgive me. I forgot an entire section. We want to do the same thing we did here. You know, this, this angle. I'm going to do the same thing, but over here now. So we want to do another 7 by 7, and we're going to go to negative 12. We're going to go from negative 6 to negative 12, which then takes that down to the height of the highway, because this is our re-entrance ramp, is what we're making. So let's do the same thing opposite that. It helps me to do things uh, corner by corner, just so I, I don't do anything asymmetrical. Like, if you do every step one by one, and you angle it all, and you, and you do this quadrant, and then do this quadrant, it all just kind of works out in my opinion. And here is my way of connecting these to the highway in question. I want to see where that ends. There we go. So we're going to match that up. We're going to do the same thing over here. Match this up with wherever this ends. And if you don't think you've got a good angle for the ending, you can always do this and it'll put a node right where you want it. Beautiful. I believe in scaffolding. You know, I believe in building temporary roads in order to um, refine your permanent roads, you know. You can you can build roads that are just there for reference. And now we're going to connect this to the highway. So I'm going to go up by, you know, we'll, we'll use freeform road tool and we'll just make this up. Uh, about 32 meters, that looks good. Sure. And if you want this to come out perfectly, you can build scaffolding there. Use the freeform road tool. Boom. That's it. I'm going to do it on the on the other end and on the other sides as well. These might be a little close on either side. I might adjust these junctions. You know, we'll we'll figure something out for this for this area. It's not really about the junctions, it's about the interchange. So on this end, I'm hoping I can pull off something like this. Let's see how this looks. Is it questionable? If this comes out questionable, a way to fix it can be to elevate this entire section of road. I've had a lot of luck with with simply elevating the area and look, it it just works out, you know. Elevated roads don't tear as badly. For whatever reason, I don't I don't know. Maybe they're thinner. Oops. Maybe they're they're thinner. Maybe they are textured differently. I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't think they're textured differently, but they tend to end more gracefully. So I did a 30 meter curve there. I'd like to just about match that here. Of course we've we've absolutely decimated our <laughs> We're very, very close to the roundabout. We'll see if the roundabout stays. I'm not positive it will. But that's okay. I'm going to convert this to elevated just so it looks pretty again. And let's check our nodes. Uh, we're looking okay on nodes. I can, I can hang with this, I think. Um, I'm going to show you how to convert... Briefly, I'm going to show you how to convert these to the right types of roads and the right directions that they should go in. So, of course, our off-ramp should be going backwards and uh, should be going forwards with the highway. And we're going to do our curve here. Beautiful. And we're continuing back. The way to fix the clipping here, if you see clipping anywhere, is to click the node on the corner and then just nudge it ever so slightly with move it. There we go. And that fixes our clipping. Um, I might even subtract that node with, um, with Electric's road tools. You know. That's, that's a good way to do it. If there's ever an awkward node that's just too close to other things, Electrics Road Tools is your mod. Um, we can slope this using whatever mod we want. I'm going to use Move It for the slope. I'm going to select the bottom and the top nodes. Then we're going to click the, the triangle here. We're going to click uh, Height Tools, and we're going to do Slope Objects. And that will automatically slope that road beautifully to where it starts down at the bottom. Started from the bottom, now we're here. And it's, it's at a nice, like, kind of flat, even grade. Now, let's continue on upgrading these roads, continuing straight, we're going under the overpass. We're making our right-hand turn. A bit of clipping there that we'll, we'll adjust out. Leave this section alone, because this is going to be a two-way road. This whole thing here is going to be two-way highway, actually. This one's one-way, so that's correct. 
these ramps are gonna have to go. We'll fix this later. <laughs> I'll I'll adjust that in the in the uh, interim, you know. And this over here is also highway ramp. Cool. And once again, the way to fix this is to go in, click on the the offending corner, and just kind of give it a little give it a little nudge. I'm gonna undo it because that's a bit heavy handed. If you click the node that you're trying to adjust and you hold control and move it, you can do a very slight adjustment. So same thing over here. I'm going to take this one, or usually I use the inside corner for some reason. And I do a very slight adjustment and just stops that clipping, you know. And this will all be two lanes. So I'm actually going to use the, the highway, the two-way highway. It's also known as a national road if you have uh, network extensions too. But we are going to use elevated highway in this section here. We are going to use grounded highway for this section here. And that's important. This this intersection here is actually two, two different... Um, this intersection needs two roads on either side. It's important. Well, I guess that looks kind of nice here. We can, we can actually lower this piece of road here. That's good. And that is the entire interchange. I'm going to take a little time and beautify it and see what we can do to maybe smooth out some of the rough edges and, and set up the traffic light and do some adjustments here. We'll see how traffic flows through it, and we'll also see, um, you know, how good it can look. And there we go. That is a completed, uh, graded, marked up, single point partial clover leaf. So we've, we've kind of uh, got the slopes of the ramps correct, and I opted to add a, a key wall, kind of a stone key to the whole thing, just to kind of refine the, the edges. And obviously we lined it with a bunch of bushes, and a substantial use of intersection marking tool to to make everything clear, you know, and add clarity and kind of detail the intersections, especially this middle intersection where it kind of ends up being a, a dark blob without it. It just kind of looks like random and ridiculous and like the traffic could pass through the middle. But this really makes it clear what is going on here and where the merging is occurring. Uh, there's also a timed traffic light here in the middle, which is I've got it set in two phases. Here's here's the beauty of the intersection just to explain everything. Um, this is free flow, because you can see the math. We've got three lanes going down to two, so that's free flow. And likewise, uh, two lanes going up to three. And that's the same on both sides. It's just like a highway merge over here. The, the math is all correct. Um, in the middle, the, the way that it works is these always have a green light. The, the roads coming in from the highway will always get a green, and the roads opposing one another will take turns. So these guys, this straight and right, will have their turn to go. And then this side will have their turn to go. And look, these guys just merge in. They don't need a light. They're just coming in regardless. But right now, their light just turned red. So now these guys can go straight and left. And all the traffic from the highway is free-flowing into the, into the interchange and out of the interchange. And the traffic going through the interchange, trying to go all the way across or trying to get onto the highway, there's just a two-phase light here. That's where the real victory of this uh, intersection, of this interchange lives, is in the two-phase light. Um, I also opted for an asymmetrical road here just to get, just to, um, so this merge wouldn't be so bad. So it merges in to two lanes and two lanes, and then a four lane highway here, and then they merge down to three. So that's the actual, how the lane math works. You can see the same thing over here. Um, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out the, uh, the, the single point partial cloverleaf. I'm really happy with this one. This is, a uh, something I kind of invented. If you, if you check out my Instagram or my Twitter, you'll see the the diagram that led to this it took a little bit of thinking to say how can I take a partial clover leaf and turn it into a single point and then further improve the intersection um, to my knowledge none of these exist in real life if you can find an example of this please put it in the comments um, I call it a single point partial clover leaf there's no guarantee that that's what other people call it um, also I stream on twitch uh, twice a week currently sometimes more but come find me on twitch at twitch.tv slash yumble tv uh, also, feel free to join the community Discord for updates and, uh, you know, discussion and memes and whatnot. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.